Well, welcome to the Briar Side Chat. I am so excited to be doing this today. I uh, got a brother of the Burley, a brother of the Briar here, uh, John Newton, uh, coming to us from Missouri. So, first of all, John, uh, welcome to Briar Side Chat. And how are you doing? Uh, thank you. I'm doing great. It's great to see you. Fantastic. Well, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your pipe? I'm going to go ahead and get mine uh, lit up here. Um, this is one I've been talking about a lot the last couple videos, really. It's this uh, straight apple uh, from Mark Tinsky, the Pipe Cottage 2020 oh, commemorative. I, I just love this thing. Couldn't wait to get it out. So while I get this lit, you go ahead and tell us about what it is you're smoking. Well, I'm smoking a... Um, it's called a cannonball, and I got it at the Mule Town Pipe Show. It's made by Briarworks. I got it this year. Very nice. Boy, that's a nice looking stem you've got on there, too. Yeah, it's called um, Chocolate Swirl. Um, I'm I'm smoking um, Seattle Pipe Club Plum Pudding Special Reserve Flake in it. You know, that sounds like a serious tobacco. I, I got to tell you, and, and maybe this is something we'll get into or uh, some people can comment on. I have really settled into um, oh, uh, Prince Albert. Good old Codger blend. I like it for a number of reasons. Partly because it is a Codger blend. Uh, partly because I seem to have some vague recollection of a tin that my dad may have had back in the day uh, and that kind of thing. But there's a part of me that also thinks that maybe I need to start branching out and, and trying some other things. So uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your, your tobacco journey. Uh, how have you progressed through different tobaccos? Well, um, I early on found that I did not like aromatics. I do like Captain Black original, which is considered an aromatic, but to me it's, yeah so mildly aromatic that it still tastes okay. But yeah. most of them smelled so great, I wanted to eat them. And then when I smoked them, they, almost all of them tasted sort of like a cigar ashtray to me. Interesting. So, totally disappointing. And um, I tried a lot of them. And then I just started t going to, and I don't know if they're, I wouldn't call them English blends. I'll just say non-aromatics because um, I guess English is mostly like Virginia and Latakia, but I like the ones that were um, Oriental forward. I guess that's a Balkan blend. Maybe I'm not sure, but um, the first one I tried that I really liked that I actually could taste and I got it from smoking pipes and they recommended it was um Seattle Pipe Club's Rainier Levant. Okay. And it was advertised as a Vulcan blend. And um, I've only been smoking a pipe for about 15 months. So I, I can tell what I don't like and what I do like, but I can't, you know, some guys rattle off 15 different tastes that they yes. you know, taste. And it's, it's like, okay, yeah, I guess. And so, um, I hadn't been able to taste anything. And I was saying that to, it was actually a lady on the phone and she said, try this one. And on the retro hail, I was actually able to detect a major floral note. And I just thought that was so cool because like, Oh my gosh, finally I can taste something. Interesting. And Interesting. then I just, I just started using, I just kept on buying non aromatics and trying different ones. I'd like, basically how I would get one is I would see somebody's video and they'd say like their top five or top 10. And yeah. so I'm like, Oh, okay, he likes it. I'll try one of those. And, um, I kept hearing about Boswell's Northwoods because, yeah, you know, um, McClellan was long gone when I started smoking a pipe. And so I was hearing about frog Morton all the time and how great it was. And, um, and I kept hearing that Northwoods was like a real close, um one that was similar to it so i tried it and it was like immediately my favorite one huh. and then i tried um boswell's countryside and that became my favorite one so boswell's countryside and northwoods are my two favorites um and the other one i love is uh wilkie's 
um, Crystal Palace. When I was at the Mule Town Pipe Show, some guy was telling me about that one and how it was um, blended before the Civil War started. Really? And it's been around that long. And I thought, okay, well, if something, yeah, I thought if something's been around that long, it's got to be good because that's why, like, Captain Black and those have been around forever because people like them. Well, and that, and so a couple of things here. One, I, I like the fact that, uh, and, and I will say, hopefully, not in, in an insulting way here, you and I appear to be about the same age or in that same um, uh, neck of the woods. And um, I appreciate that you are newer to the uh, pipe thing as well. I am still under a year. It was last summer that I got started. Uh, so yeah. I appreciate, appreciate uh, another uh, fellow of our years uh, who is newer to this as well. I started off with Captain Black. And it was because I, I remembered my mom talking about buying tobacco for my dad at the grocery store when he smoked a pipe. And as I said, I don't know that I even remember him smoking a pipe. He mostly smoked cigarettes when I was growing up. But there was a time when he did, and he apparently smoked Royal Tivoli. Well, I got on one of the, the, the sites and said, hey, you know, does this even exist anymore? Yada, yada, yada. And somebody said, you know, probably the closest thing is Captain Black. And I'm like, okay, whatever Captain Black is, I don't know. Uh, went and found some and and tried it and and liked it for for a while and then kind of kind of say moved to some of these other things here. So now, what's the one you said you like the best now? It's Prince Albert. That's what I've got here, and and unless I say otherwise, that's what I've got in all my videos is Prince Albert. I do have some Sir Walter Raleigh. In fact, I just smoked uh, some Sir Walter Raleigh. From my uh, speaking of your state there, Missouri, uh, my Missouri Mearsham, uh, Missouri Pride last night. Uh, for some reason, I really like the uh, Sir Walter Raleigh in that cob. Yeah, I haven't tried any of the other codger blends except for Captain Black, and I've tried Captain Black Gold and Platinum. Okay, and I don't think they compare to the original one really. Yeah, I was I was doing the original for a while, and I will say I, it did start to go a little kind of flat tasting to me. And I'm like, let me try something else. And then, say, I kind of got into these others, but at some point I need to probably uh, broaden my palate uh, quite a bit. Now, you and I got to talking via YouTube. Am I am I remembering that correctly? Yes. So, are you involved in any of the other, like you? I'm uh, sorry, uh, Facebook pipe groups or uh, the Pipe Cottage social app? Do you do any of that other kind of stuff? I'm in all of those, but I don't really, I don't do social media hardly at all. So like I joined and then I never really look on anything. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, because Alan Harrelson actually is the reason why I started. I've never smoked anything. Same, um, same, here. same here. I read one time in college, like I took one puff and almost fainted. I got so dizzy just with one puff. And um, so I really never smoked anything. And so. I was watching him somehow. I, I don't even know how I stumbled on his website. And because um, I didn't have this YouTube that I have now, I had I have another channel that I had this I've had for like 13 years or something. And so um, I was captivated by his accent. <laughs> I could listen to I told him, he said, I said, you should be reading books on like audible books because I could listen to you for hours. So many people say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I liked what he had to say. I loved the fact that he was a history professor and um, lots of them and stuff. Yeah. And, and so I'm like, I'm going to try smoking a pipe. So I knew anything. So, and I looked around and I had not seen any, you know, I mean, there's, they've demonized all tobacco because of cigarettes, but right. I didn't see any evidence that, anybody had ever really gotten hurt from a pipe that was actually documented and proven. And so um, I went on eBay and I bought this dead guy pipe, uh, the Savinelli and the stem was practically falling out when I got it. And huh. I smoked that. And that's kind of how I started. Well, it, it, you, you may have seen, I've talked about this a couple of times on my channel, but literally as last summer, um, uh, my mom ended up passing away uh, just a few months ago in December. But uh, prior to that, we'd been cleaning out my parents' house. My dad passed away in 2009. And uh, I ran across 
couple of his pipes. And like, like you, I'd never smoked before. And um, last summer, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get one pouch of tobacco just in honor of my dad. Just kind of see what this is all about, you know. Uh, oh, wow. Really, really enjoyed it. And not for the nicotine hit. It, it wasn't that. It's just the experience of it. I thought, wow, this this is kind of nice. Um, and and even prior to that, though, I had to do the same thing. I went online, went on uh, to YouTube, uh, tried to find out. I don't know how to pack a pipe, right? I don't know how to uh do any of that stuff so i had to go on and that's how i discovered alan uh with the pipe cottage and his information was so good and then again like you i enjoyed his, his history stuff and, and and other things that uh, that he had to say and then uh one thing and another started following other pipers on youtube and hitting some of those groups on facebook and and i will say uh, my experience of the online pipe community has been a hundred percent positive now, now you yep. watch, I'm going to upload this video and I'm going to get hate mail or something. But uh, <laughs> up until this point, it has been absolutely fabulous. And people have been so generous uh, with their advice. I, I see a lot of codgers talking to new guys. This right. is what you want to do. If you're getting a little tongue bite, maybe try this. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm going, oh, man, that's that's the good part of social media, you know. Exactly. And that's pipe smoking's definitely not intuitively obvious. No. You really have to learn how it's like almost an art. If it hadn't been for YouTube, I probably would have quit a long time ago because um, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. And it's not stuff tobacco in there and then puff away. Um, because if you do that, it's not going to stay lit and you know, you're going to be puffing too hard and yeah. end up burning. Your and actually for probably the first I don't know, six or eight months, I thought the end of my tongue was going to turn into a piece of leather. Yeah. But it was because I was smoking too much because I was trying to figure out what I could taste and what I liked. So sometimes I had like three pipes full of stuff and do an A-B test. Oh, wow. Okay. This one, oh, it's, you know. which is way more than most people do. Yeah. Well, and, and simply, I, I was getting the, the tongue bite early on. And uh, in fact, <laughs> I was working up quite a mouth of spit. And I, I was noticing that I was, you know, puffing and I'm having to turn and spit. And I'm going, hmm, is, is that normal? And, you know, ask somebody online, you're like, no, you probably are going a little too fast if that's what's happening. And, you know, learning to develop your cadence, to where now it really is it's enjoyable not getting the tongue bite not getting that excess saliva and uh, okay. uh really really thoroughly enjoyable now it looks as if you're sitting out on uh, maybe a, a screened in porch or a, a four season yeah. room or something there is that is that where uh, you usually get to enjoy your pipe well um actually i sit out on my deck mostly okay but we've got one beehive and my wife was like opened it and she hadn't done anything with it for so long. And the bees got so angry that like I would go up there and I would have one bee that just kept hitting me in the head and trying to sting me and drive me out. Like it wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> I got stung, uh, I don't know, four days before that or something. And my entire eye swelled shut. My whole face puffed out. Oh, I, had to, I had to go to emergency care to get steroids and stuff. And oh. um, yeah, so I had that in my, like I just had that happen, that experience. And now I got one B that keeps like hitting, like won't leave me alone. It's trying to sting <laughs> my. And so um, today is the first day actually that I walked over there that I didn't have a B hassling me. And wow. I it can't be the same B, that'd be impossible. But like, if I went out this other door over here behind me, there's another door a bee would find me there. A bee would find me right out here. And I had a bee behind me. There's a screen right here hitting the screen like it was trying to get me from in here. So but I've been you clearly see that as their territory and that you are invading their territory. Yeah. And it was bizarre because I wasn't even close to the hop. And actually, where well, on the yurt, where I was being hassled the most, I wasn't even in sight of the hive. 
So they couldn't see from the hive. They couldn't see me. And I didn't know if it was the color shirt I was wearing. And I oh. thought there's no remember that they just had this, you know, like she had this hive taken apart and was like scraping, you know, there was so many weird things that she had to scrape off. There was larva that she was killing. So she was actually attacking their hive I big see. time as far as they were concerned. Yeah. But I couldn't, how can they remember, you know, they shouldn't be able to remember, you know, like, oh, there's a person there. I'm going to go get it. Right. right. Well, I use, I love being out here on my deck. Um, I'm in central Indiana and uh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, I was for a moment, I actually was set up in my garage because I thought we were going to have some storms coming through. Uh, I set up in the garage and then I kept looking. I was like, well, it doesn't really look like it's going to rain. Maybe I'll go and move back outside, which is where I prefer. I definitely don't smoke in the house. Uh, my wife certainly does not enjoy it does not enjoy the uh, the smell, and um, even though pipes do seem to be preferable to uh, for a lot of people to uh, other things. You know, I want to come back to something you mentioned about health issues. And it is true that so much of this has been demonized because of cigarettes, exactly as you said. And I certainly have not done an exhaustive search, and certainly I'm not speaking as any kind of a medical expert. Uh, that's that's not my wheelhouse. That's not my thing. But from what I have seen is that this does not have the effect that cigarettes do. In fact, I've, I've read where a number of people who enjoy pipes do not actually consider themselves to be smokers in, in the way that, you know, if you're smoking a couple packs a day cigarettes, those people definitely consider themselves smokers. So what was health an issue or a concern for you when you picked this up? Well, um, yeah, kind of because I, well, I mean, I, I didn't, I, I didn't think that like, I knew you didn't inhale. So I'm like, okay, so you're not really, it just basically you're sucking in and blowing out. So, um, I actually didn't even get any nicotine hit for a long time. Um, and then I, I got it finally, but like, um, things like if you have a cigar in your mouth, you're going to get through your soft tissues. That's like the nicotine's leaching right in. So you're going to get a nicotine hit from that easier. Yeah. yeah right. Or, or like chewing tobacco or doing snuff or something. Right. So I didn't think anything about it really. Um, my sisters had a fit. I have three sisters and they had a fit say like, Oh, you're going to get cancer and stuff. And, and I'm thinking like, you know, I'm practically, I'm 67 right now. And, you know, if that's on the horizon, you know, I'm not going to be living that much longer anyway. So I didn't, even, I just said, you know, there's no proof it does anything. Because I didn't even find any proof it caused mouth, because there's some mouth cancer and stuff. No, I didn't I mean anything like that, even at all, even for tobacco, um, cigars. I have heard there are problems with your teeth and stuff from having the chew in the bottom, you know, having your gums recede and stuff. Yeah, and I yeah, actually yeah. that had that happen. But then I think they're physically pushing down on it. And so they're actually mechanically sure. sure. Pushing their well, and as so many people have said, one of the significant health benefits is the the relaxing, the unwinding the the getting rid of the stress of the day whatever um and admittedly you don't have to have a pipe to do that uh but certainly it seems like a lot of pipe um aficionados that's part of what draws them to it is is the kind of that quiet reflective life right and like um i had no my prayer life was like terrible because i never could think of anything to even say hardly so if i prayed it'd be like two minutes or less and I remember like when I first started smoking a pipe, I sat on the deck and I like prayed for 45 minutes. I just like was praying for people. Yeah. People come and pray for them. And it was incredible. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is a great benefit. Yes. That I mm, so glad you mentioned that. That hit me probably was a few months in. And I found myself, I was just smoking and found that I didn't really even enjoy reading or doing anything else. I just wanted to be be quiet. And I found my mind drifting to blessings in my life, thinking about yeah. my family, various things. And next thing you know, 
I, I'm moving into outright prayer and and thanking God for this and thanking his blessing on that and 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 I, I've told several people that uh, it, that I, I the one thing I do enjoy doing other than making videos uh, while smoking is is praying absolutely absolutely yeah I and I don't my teeth are I have good teeth because I was obsessed with going to the dentist and making sure that I never had cavities and stuff but I cannot stand clenching a pipe it just is uncomfortable holding on to some hard plastic thing in my teeth. So I don't do anything other than smoke or pray because I'm holding it the whole time. Now, I have done some clenching. And again, some pipes are better suited for it than others. One of the things I said in the review of this uh, Mark Tinsky was that I could really uh, talk around the stem reasonably well. And and I, I did kind of enjoy that. Uh, I do want to touch on one other thing uh, with you. Uh, you had uh, mentioned before, I uh, believe, um, you were the fellow who was talking to me. Uh, you're you're a fountain pen guy, also. Is that right? Yeah, I I haven't actually. At, last night I ordered some paper. Mm. Um, I had stopped writing with them because of, I um I don't do a journal, but like I have ADD, so I work out of a composition. You know those composition notebooks where they're sewn in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and I was using a dip pen a lot. Actually, I got it here. Um. Because I didn't have to fill pens with ink and then get them, you know, have to keep cleaning them out. So nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Because um, we lived not that far from Corning in New York. And so I bought this at Corning at uh, the you glass. Did? Yeah. Wow. And oh, wow. that was years ago or eight, 17 years ago, I bought this and um, I never used it. And I got it out and I'm like, got some ink and I was dipping it. And I, I found that I could write almost a whole page without having to dip it again. It was unbelievable how nice it worked. But the last times I got um, those composition books has started bleeding like crazy. So they changed the paper. And um, I, I use those as like a to-do list every single day. And then if I make phone calls or, you know, anything, I make notes in them of what yeah. I've done and that kind of thing. So I can keep track of stuff. But the paper has just changed to where it's. You do need unique. a good good paper that can hold up hold up to the ink you yeah. get like bleeding and um feathering really bad oh. feathering now i i had a glass pen years ago still have it um in fact i think i may have gotten it at a renaissance fair either in missouri or perhaps when we were living in texas but then just within this last year uh two different students of mine gave me a glass dip pen uh which i keep at school i keep both of those at school and uh, of course 21st century high school students think that is the coolest thing ever, right? So if I pull out a little bottle of ink and a dip pen, oh, Mr. Perkins, what is that? You know, they think they've never seen anything like that and uh, and think oh. that that's just the coolest thing ever. So, yeah. Yeah. The rage in Japan right now. Oh, is that right? That's what I heard. Huh. Well, I will say, I, I do think that uh, one of the things that unite a lot of, of pipers as well is that appreciation for some of the finer things, not necessarily, you know, elite or super expensive, but just the nicer things of life um, and some of the older fashioned things of life, like a dip pen or a fountain pen. And so uh, I do think that kind of uh, connects a lot of us here. Well, I want to respect your time today, John. Uh, uh, boy, I tell you what, if you'd ever like to uh, pop back on and let's have another chat, I would love to do that. Um, you will actually okay. be the, the, this is the first episode a briar side chat it will be coming out very very soon and i think a lot of people are going to really enjoy it i would really enjoy that myself i had i've had a great time and thank you so much for the opportunity